Are you thinking of getting crafty for Easter? If so, this is the right video for you. And if you love crafting, flower arranging and visits to the charity shop, this is the channel for you. I would love it if you would consider subscribing. All you need to do is to tap the button marked subscribe and that means next time you open the YouTube app on your phone, your tablet or your computer, one of my videos will be waiting for you. I'm setting up on my kitchen table for a bit of a crafting marathon. I'm going to be decoupaging some eggs, gluing some eggs together to make a pretty springtime arrangement, making some kukadama and planting up a container I bought from the charity shop. For me, I love a bit of flower arranging and some crafting and being creative. It's a fabulous mindful activity. You can push all those worries and concerns to the back of your mind as you concentrate on the fiddly details. Now, the thing about flower arranging is you have to know when to stop. You don't want to overpack your arrangements, but with crafting, you can always make one more project. And here's some of my previous crafting projects. This egg here has been marbled. I blew it first, big hole at the bottom and a small hole at the top, which you blow the egg out of. And I laid this on a bed of shaving foam and food colouring. Now I'm not quite sure my, whether I made a video of this or whether it's one of the free videos in my Facebook group, Flower Start World. This egg here, I've made a larger hole so I can use it as a little vase and made some patterns on it using a permanent marker. And the other egg there, that is an actual marbled egg, which I picked up from a bric-a-brac stall at one of my flower festivals that I visited. And the other eggs, well, they originally were little vase containers and I've decoupaged over them to make them into whole eggs again. I just make sure when I tumble them into my bowl that the previously open section of the egg is facing downwards. And sometimes I like to change things up a bit. So I reckon these three eggs, which I've previously crafted, are probably due for a bit of a revamp. This one has got raised markings on it, made with a 3D fabric pen. I've done some drawing with a permanent marker on the other one, and I stuck a feather on the last one. So let's get crafting. My friend has given me a pair of polystyrene eggs, so I thought I would use those today. And she also gave me this Christmas, Christmas Easter napkin, a springtime napkin. Now, if you're interested in sourcing the supplies, I have left links in the description underneath the video for poly some polystyrene eggs, for some decoupage glue, some decoupage papers and some spring napkins, not these exact ones, a couple of napkins I quite liked the look of. For my first egg, I'm going to use some water to draw around the little rabbit motif on the napkin. You could use a pair of scissors to cut out, but I quite like the effect of using paper because it gives you a lovely frayed edge. Once you've marked the outline of where you want to cut your papers, just use a little bit of pressure to pull out the section that you want. You need to be a little bit careful. And if you think this is a bit too random for you, of course you could go in with a pair of scissors and cut a very neat edge around your motif. You'll need some glue next. So as I said, I have left a link to some decoupage glue in the description underneath the video. It's not in a green tub. They seem to have relaunched it and it's in a clear tub if you do want to look for that online. Or you could use any PVA glue, which you might want to water down a little bit. So I paint the glue onto my egg and then using my moist paintbrush, pick up the decoupage motif here and then brush it on, getting rid of any air bubbles and any creases. So the tricky part here is you're taking a flat object and trying to shape it around a 3D one. So you do need to be a little bit careful. For my next egg, I'm going to cut out an oval shape to see whether I can get a bit more coverage on my egg. So again, I 
use the water to cut out the shape that I want. And this will be a little bit trickier to put on the egg because again, I've got quite a large flat surface of napkin, which I want to glue onto that small rounded object. So you just need to take your time and just embrace the fact that decoupage will leave you with a little bit of a rougher texture to your paper because of the little creases and folds. But if you don't like decoupaging in one section at a time, you could always rip smaller pieces and then patchwork those together. And that way, although you'll get some overlaps, you won't get the creases because your pieces of paper will be smaller and they will therefore be able to follow the curves of your egg more smoothly. I'm going to refinish this egg, which I originally decorated with three dimensional fabric glue, a bit like using a nozzle when you pipe icing onto a cake. So it's going to give me a bit of a lumpy finish, but I think it's probably time for a new look. So I'm going to go onto the floral part of my paper and cut out an oval shape and do exactly the same thing as I did with my little bunny on the last little clip but I'm going to use two pieces, one to the front and one to the back, just making sure I take my time to smooth carefully the paper as it gets to the pointed end of the egg. I then very gently put my eggs just resting in the egg box so that they can dry, but they don't actually get stuck inside the box. And as I said earlier, if you want a little bit more control, you can use smaller pieces of paper, either cutting with a pair of scissors to get some nice neat lines or just to rip them up by hand. And by adding the smaller pieces on, slightly more time consuming, but it does mean that you can get the paper to lie flatter onto the egg without those more pronounced creases. Although I will say that once your eggs are dried, I think it'd be very hard without close inspection to see whether you used one sheet or lots of small ones. So I'll leave that up to you. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. Are you going to go for a large sheet of decoupage or cut your papers up smaller? For my actual flower arranging project, I'm going to take some eggs and glue them together to create a ring. So I've been very careful when I've been doing my cooking lately to crack my eggs open using a knife. So tapping gently towards the pointed end and once I've got through the egg to peel away the top of the egg using my thumb and fingers. And then placing my eggs inside a round bowl, you could use a saucepan for this, any container with a rounded shape, glue in the eggs as you go and that way you get a perfect circle. To disguise the red date stamp on my eggs, I decided to give them a quick zhuzh with some spray paint. So I took my printing sheet outside onto the patio, shook up my can of spray paint and just gave it the lightest dusting of paint. So you could still see some of the original egg color, but you couldn't see the date stamps. And then I took a little ring to flower club and added in lots of short stemmed flowers. I expect you can hear the chatter of the ladies at Flower Club. One of my friends said, are you going to keep your eggs in this little silver tray? She suggested I put them on a cake stand and display them that way. For my next project, I'm going to use this bunt pan, which I picked up from the charity shop for about 50p or a pound and this is a really lovely project to do. You could use any kind of container, perhaps you've got an old teapot, milk jugs, teacup and saucers, anything you like. Just a word of warning though, I don't have any drainage holes in this and of course if you're using a teacup you won't have a drainage hole either. So I need to make sure that I don't overwater my plants because they'll get waterlogged. I'm also trying as well to make a mental note of giving my plants a bit of rest from being indoors. When you've got them in the warmth of your living room, they will grow quite high and of course they will need watering. So what I try and do every night is to take my plants outside and put them on my patio table so they have a bit of cool air to relax and enjoy and get a little bit of natural watering from the, the dewy mists in the morning. 
and hopefully just light showers of rain. This is quite a messy project so you either need to do quite a lot of tidying up if you're working on your kitchen table or it might be better to put on your coat and sit out on your patio and do a bit of indoor gardening outdoors. You see me here trying to tuck the roots from my daffodils out of the way. I'm using the soil from the pots as a bit of top dressing but you could use gravel or moss. And say hello to Maggie, always keeping me company. Hello Maggie. Hello Maggie. Bearing my friend's advice in mind, I got out a cake plate and was going to lift my little circle of eggs onto it. Of course, I'd put water in my eggshells by now and they were quite heavy. And as I picked them up, I could feel that the glue was coming apart a little bit. So if you are wanting to display your eggs more decoratively than I did, make up your arrangement first and put it where you want to display it. Add your water in and then you won't have the same problem as me. Now let's move on to our last project, which is the Kukadama. I'm using flat moss here and it's actually a little bit dried out, but not to worry, we will work with it. So I'm picking out all the little bits of pine cone and little bits of twig and just deciding how big a pot of bulbs I want to wrap up. I'm using grape hyacinths and I've decided that the pot of six is going to be too big. So I'm splitting them down the middle and I'm going to make two kukadamas, one with three and another with three. And actually I made three in the end using some of my leftover mini daffodils. So I'm lucky enough, I got a large sheet of moss. So I'm tearing around the edges, just something I think will fit around the kukadama. If you've got smaller bits of moss, you can do this just as easily, although you might find it slightly fiddly, but just start with one bit of moss, wrap it on, then patchwork on your other bits of moss. And by the time you've finished, you won't know whether you'd use a single sheet or lots of sheets because all the moss will have mingled and matted together. I'm going to attach my moss using mossing wire. So this is the kind of wire that you would use to make your Christmas door wreath. I like using it because it's firm and it holds in place and the wire disappears. If you don't have any to hand though, you could use string and make more of a decorative element of the string. But obviously every time you put the string, ball of string down, it might unravel slightly. So you just need to be really firm with your pulling. So once you've wrapped your, your moss in place, you've gone up to the top, down to the bottom, round to the sides, you finish off by cutting your wire and then just poking that back into the moss ball and it will be nice and secure. So to keep these fresh and moist, you could be leaving them outside overnight or using a spray mister just to make sure that your plants have got enough moisture to survive. So I'm going to display my kukadama on my little raised cake plate and then add in some of my decoupaged eggs as a little bit of festive decoration. And all I need to do now is to decide whereabouts I'm going to display all my crafted wares. So I like to display my flower arrangements on the sideboard in the alcove in my dining room. Let me know in the comments your favourite place for displaying your flower arrangements. And I think they all look really beautiful displayed together. I've got my planted bulbs in the silver cake tin. My eggshell arrangements, which I think probably is my favourite of the things I've been making today. And lastly, my Kukadama balls. Let me know in the comments what was your favourite project too. If you've got any questions about how I tackled these projects, do let me know in the comments or ask me over in my free Facebook group, Flower Start World. You'll find the joining link to that in the description underneath the video. And on the subject of joining things, why don't you consider joining my YouTube membership group? You get early access to my Monday uploads videos and you can watch them advert free 
and you get free access to my monthly online flower arranging club. Perhaps you might not decide it's for you, but hopefully you will join my free Facebook group and that's the place that you can ask questions and share your crafts and flower arranging projects. Well, that's all for me for now and I'll see you again next time.